Why, hello there. I'm back and ready to share another math game with you called Back to Back. And to those of you new to my channel, I'm Mrs. O, here to support my parents, students, and teachers with all things math related, ed tech tips, and educational resources. Back to Back is a great game for when you have five to 10 minutes to spare transitioning from subject to subject or can serve as a bell ringer activity at the beginning or end of the school day. Honestly, I think you and your students are going to love this game so much that you might even consider making it part of your daily math routine. So if you end up agreeing with me and you like this game, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up down below. Now let's check it out. Back to Back is a computation game that is played in pairs where students get to practice their addition and multiplication computation. It helps to build reasoning and number sense skills, encourages the use of mental math strategies, such as inverse operation and more. To play back to back, you will need a teacher or student to serve as a caller and two players that will stand in front of the class board with their backs to each other. They don't need to be touching. In fact, you can have them several feet from each other just as long as their backs are facing each other and instruct them not to turn around. Each player will need a dry erase marker and eraser to write their numbers on the board. The objective of the game back to back is to be the first player to guess the other player's number. Let's get into how it all works by starting off with addition back to back. The teacher or student caller will say, write any digit one through nine. So let's say that student one writes a four and student two writes a nine. The teacher or student caller would then quickly add the two numbers and then would say out loud, the sum is 13. Then each student will begin working to figure out the other student's number there are several ways that they can go about finding the answer. One way is by thinking of it in terms of finding the missing add-in. As we see here, student one wrote a four, so he or she can think to himself, four plus what number equals 13? Likewise, student two wrote a nine and can think nine plus what number equals 13? And now is a great time for students to apply the strategies that they've learned, like the add-on strategy, or using the inverse operation of subtraction to solve for it. For example, student one could subtract four from 13 and end up with nine. Instead, student two could use the add-on strategy and add on from nine until they get 13, giving them four. The challenge is for students to be able to use these strategies efficiently enough to be the first one to guess the other person's number and to say it out loud. Let's try another one. The caller would say, Write any digit one through nine, and student one writes an eight, and student two a seven. Then the teacher or student caller would quickly add the two numbers and call out the sum. And make sure to say out loud, the sum is 15. At that point, both students will use strategies to solve for the other student's number. The challenge is, is to be the first one to guess that number. When you first start playing this game, you'll notice that students are a bit delayed in their response because they're thinking through different strategies or perhaps unsure about what strategy to use. That is a great opportunity to model the strategies and as students become more proficient at using it, that will build their computational fluency and you'll notice that the game starts to pick up. In this next example, we're gonna be using the multiplication version of the back-to-back -back game. Like before, the caller would say, write any digit one through nine and student one writes a six, student two, a five. The caller would then multiply those two numbers and call out the product, making sure to say out loud, the product is 30. Both students would then automatically think how to go about solving for it. For example, students can think in terms of trying to find the missing factor. Student one wrote a six, so think to themselves, six times what number equals 30? Student two wrote the number five, thinking five times what number gives them 30? If students know their facts, then they'll be able to easily and quickly call out the numbers. However, this game does not require them to have memorized their facts. Hopefully as they play, they'll become more proficient and they will end up memorizing their facts. In the meantime, they can use other strategies like skip counting. And just as a side note, I have a collection of skip counting songs that covers facts three through nine. So make sure to check that out in the link above. Or students can also use the inverse operation of division. So let's say student one decides to skip count. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Stopping at 30, they will notice that they added six five times, therefore call out the missing number of five. And if student one were to guess the other student's number first, then 
he or she would win that round. And the teacher can continue with the game by calling up another student to compete with student one and continue in like manner until they win three rounds in a row. In this next example, you can step it up a notch by changing the range of numbers that a student can write. So if you know that students need a little bit more practice with their three through 12 facts, then you can adjust it so that they do so. And instead of saying students write digits one through nine, you can change it and say, write any number three through 12. As you can see here, the benefits of playing back to back are many, but here are a few pointers to keep in mind. When you first introduce the game, make sure to model the thinking process. And this may need to be done several times before students become comfortable with it. Also make sure that students have repeated opportunities to play the game. And you'll notice that their computational fluency begins to improve. You also wanna ensure that you rotate players. So after a student wins three rounds in a row, then you'd want to change that student out and bring up two new players. Last but not least, consider giving a small treat to the winner. That will definitely increase students' interest in learning to play the game well, and in turn, learn their facts. Well, that's a wrap, and I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I do, and I'm sure your students will too. Thank you for watching, and to continue to support my channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.